everyone, it's Julia Chow. Welcome back to my channel where you see the confirmation and the possibility that being yourself actually pays you the best. Today, I have an amazing guest. She is one of my best clients and as a Nigerian immigrant and a woman of color, she went all in in her business based on her passion, experience, and expertise right around the time of coronavirus quarantine. And after six or seven months, she has generated quarter million dollars. I want you to hear from her what she believes has gotten her these results, why she invested in mindset and working with me very early on in the entrepreneurial journey. And there's so much wisdom and knowledge to learn from her what success mindset actually looks and feels like. Okay, today we have Miss Eno Eka here with me today. I am so, so, so grateful to have you on this video to share so much of your success that I think is extremely incredible Thank because you. Eno is someone who started a business and in six months, she broke her six figures. And not to mention that, the thing that's amazing about Eno is that she was able to do all of this during the coronavirus quarantine, meltdown, freak out, chaos, whatever you wanna call it. So I am so excited to have you here because your story is so inspiring that I can't wait for you to start speaking of how you did it and how you got here and just to inspire people who are also aspiring to mm -hmm. find their place in the world and to accelerate and thrive in it. Yeah. So yeah, also awesome. um, thank you for having me, Julia. I'm happy to be here and happy to, you know, share my story and my experience yeah. basically with, you know, everyone who gets to see this because um, you know, if you could do it, if I could do it, then they also can do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Eno, tell us a bit more about what you do, just so people can get a clear idea. All right, awesome. So, my name is Eno Eka. I'm based out here in Canada, in Calgary. Um, a bit about what I do. I'm a business analyst and change manager. Um, so, I run my own company. Um, I do consulting uh, for uh, small to medium companies. Um, I teach at the university and then I have my own uh, coaching programs as well, where I help people who want to start careers in business analysis or also progress in your business analysis career. So regardless of the phase or stage you're in, um, there's definitely something for you. So basically that's what I do uh, through my business, any consulting incorporated. Amazing. So Eno, can you tell us a little bit about, cause I think some people might find it quite overwhelming uh, when yeah. they hear your like your results now, like all six figures in six months, because I think a lot of people struggle as entrepreneurs in many ways in the earlier stages. Yeah. And so I find that you're, I mean, what you've done is like the four minute mile. It's like when someone can do it now, the idea is in there that anyone can do it. Right. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about where you were six months ago? What you were experiencing? What was going through your mind? Mm. Where were you? Okay, so um, I mean, um, I started my business about two years ago. Um, I started with you know doing consulting work, um, you know, working for the university, doing some other consulting on the side, um, you know, doing some coaching as well. And I mean, it was good. It was relative because. There was a couple of bucks coming in, you know, you know, thousands of dollars here and there. But when I made that decision consciously mm -hmm. to sort of step things up and kind of do more and be more and sort of that awareness that, oh, I can actually do this and actually could actually become um, a fulfilling business. Um, it, I can't, it kind of changed things around for me. So, you know, six months ago, in fact, as that last year, you know, I still sort of doubted myself because I'm a new immigrant to Canada, you know, I'm, I'm female, you know, in a very male dominated space. Um, I'm a person of color, you know, so there's not, you know, a lot of people in this space 
who are actually stepping up to it. Um, you know, and, you know, there was a lot of all those limiting beliefs that, you know, can you really do this? Because there was really no one that I could look up to, to say, oh, well, I can relate to this person in my field. I mean, there are people that I look up to, like, you know, everyone looks up to like Oprah, you know, and all those kind of people, Michelle Obama, and, you know, these people inspire us as women, but in my niche, there was really no one I could look up to and think this person has gone ahead to do it. So it was sort of being a starter you know, kind of being like a pioneer of this thing, you know, in my own space and in my own circumstance, right? Yeah. And because I also found that a lot of immigrants were drawn to me because of my story. Yeah. So it didn't just become an overnight success, Julia, you know, I'd, I was already working with six figure jobs. So I already got that success in, you know, my career. So it was basically how to replicate this, you know, into my business. Yeah. And, you know, there was that struggle of, can you really do this? You know, I mean, anyone can do this in your career, but as a business, can you really do this? So that's, I was, it was a lot of the mindset, right? It was a lot of the mindset, um, pushing through the mindset, limiting beliefs and struggles and, you know, pushing myself to achieving um, the success I have right now. <laughs> so, Anno, so I think because um, maybe you don't work with like the type of people that I work with, I think I need to give you a perspective. I think I've repeated this to you before, but um, I think you think your success is kind of normal. <laughs> oh yeah, I had a six-figure job, so why not six figures in my business? But I find that it doesn't work like that because what requires for an entrepreneur to make six figures is totally different from what yeah. you do in a corporate job. Yeah. Well, I've had clients who had a six figure job for years in their corporate job. Yeah. were struggling so hard as an entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, struggling like basically like a couple of thousand here and there was like a lot of money for them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also want to point out that what you, what you mentioned about the mindset, that is so key because that shift is what enabled you to make that choice, right? Yes, definitely. The mindset shift was so key with making those choices because um, as being in a career is safe. It's safe. Yeah, it you, is. Know, you know, running a business, being an entrepreneur okay. is, is not so safe because there's a lot of risk involved with, you know, are you going to succeed? You try a lot of things, you fail, you know, you spend money and, you know, the money doesn't return any, um, any, um, there's no return on investment on that expense. You know, there is a lot of uncertainty with regards to, can I really do this? Can I really succeed in my business? So that mindset, um, you know, shift was so key for me to um, be where I am today. And, you know, and, you know, happy for, you know, people like you, Julia, who are helping entrepreneurs, you know, just like me and, you know, people around the world who are, who just need um, a little bit of that, you know, that tweak, you know, in their mindset and me basically helping them see the success that they, they have already inside of them. So with regards to everyone, uh, we already have the success inside of us, right? We just need to go in and sort of bring it out, right? And then, walk through every of those limiting beliefs that we have and embody the success that we desire. And really that was the beginning of my journey, embracing mm -hmm. the mindset. Um, once I was able to get a good grasp of my mindset and set goals and sort of get that accountability, um, you know, with someone like you, you know, helping me as well to get that accountability and setting goals and even, you know, reaching the goal even before the, date, the due date that we had even scheduled for that goal was amazing. But the, the truth is, with with the with the work that we um, we sort of did together, it was it was strange how it wasn't it wasn't like I was doing a lot of work, but there was just these tiny tweaks every time, you know, just moving you towards the goal every time, you know, after every call or every you know conversation, there's always something different. There's always something, and you just keep going closer and closer. And your mind just gets, you know, it's just I don't know how to explain it, but it's just tweaked. You know, yeah. it's, it's you know, wiring, yeah, like wiring, you know, and then before you know it, you're there. And it's a continuous thing, really, because it doesn't really stop because um, so you want to start a business. There's a there's a leap you have to make. Mm -hmm. And then you, you pass four figures to five figures to six figures to seven figures that you, you keep rewiring your, you know, your subconscious mind, you know, mm -hmm. and telling yourself that you can do it and repeating these things to yourself. Yeah, and yeah. then also the. Um, the activities you carry out, 
um, you know, every day from, you know, the affirmations, the things you say to yourself, your visualization, the activities you carry out, mm -hmm. the people you surround yourself with that so it was, it was sort of a process, but every day, you know, somehow something was just changing and I can't really explain it. <laughs> yeah, this mindset is very intangible. And yeah. one of the things I find remarkable about you, I know you had like consulting and stuff like that for two years yeah. before, but once you decided to, you know, I would like to go all in on this and yeah. you, you start to have like that idea, you are one of the rare people that have noticed that you sought out a mindset coach and then you found me very quickly because what I normally find that you, usually entrepreneurs like invest a lot more in, like marketing, business coaching, like more tangible strategy type of thing, yeah. which also is necessary. But I find that people struggle in those things. So if anyone's watching and you've done like a courses and mastermind, you're not really making the kind of results that you want. I find that people take about two years until they realize, oh, maybe I need to look at this other area, right? Yeah. But the thing about you is that you invested in mindset very quickly. Can you tell us how you arrived at the decision? Um, well, luckily for me, um, you know, early in my career, when I was about to start making all these big leaps, um, I had people who mentored me and sort of showed me the way with regards to um, how mindset helps you. And basically, for me to achieve the success I did in my career, you know, um, as a full-time employee was mindset. It was majorly mindset, right? Yeah. And I had all the qualifications and certifications and I had the knowledge and the skills, but the mindset was key for me to achieving all those things. So I knew that, and I had the awareness that, you know, mindset was key for me to achieve anything. In fact, I'd read so many books about mindset. I'd been exposed to a lot of information about how mindset is the key to success. You know, my mentor had always told me that success is 80% mindset and 20%, you know, the strategy and the skill set. So I knew Amazing. that for the year 2020, I wanted to leap and real, real fast. I wanted to make some decisions mm -hmm. and I wanted to do things in the fastest way possible. And I knew that the only thing stopping me from achieving that was the mindset. I had everything. I had the strategy, the business was in place. So it's not like I needed a business coach to tell me, oh, go register your business or go um, open a website, or you know, go have a company email, or open a LinkedIn account. That wasn't the thing, like all those things were there, but it was the mindset to, can I really do this? Because we all struggle with you know, this imposter syndrome and limiting beliefs at different stages, mm -hmm. right? So I knew that to make that leap to six figures, I needed to break through some certain barriers, right? And you know, moving from six figures to seven figures, I know that I still have to break through some barriers because sometimes you look at yourself like wow is this really me how did i do this <laughs> you know so yeah i mean um i was looking at my numbers yesterday and we're on the verge of making a quarter of a million so like that's two hundred and fifty thousand. yeah and you know we're on the verge of making that this month and i'm like wow how did i do this is this really me you yeah know? so you definitely have all those thoughts and yeah. to help you break through every level you have to you know sort of you know, get better, you know, do more with your mindset. So I had that awareness and that's why I was like, you know what, I would rather invest in myself because once I'm in the right um, place, mm -hmm. um, once my mind is in the right place, I am, I'm good, my body, my mind is well, my business is going to succeed for sure because I run this show, right? Yeah. I steer the sheep. So if I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm healthy, you know, my mind and body is working together. My subconscious and conscious are in sync. Then yeah. everything that I do um, yeah. is just going to be ease and flow, you know, and that's how it's been. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. Amazing. What would you say? Because um, I think some people might have a hard time like, oh, a quarter of a million already, right? <laughs> <laughs> So I can't believe it too, but that's what it is. Yeah, no, I mean, it's good. It's, it's so tangible that you can share this because again, the financial results are, the res is a byproduct, right? Mm -hmm. Of several things. One, what's internally happening, in, right? In your mind, in, like you said, subconscious, conscious alignment. Yeah. Two is, you know, it's all about the value you put out to the world. So obviously what you're offering has very high value and people can see it very quickly. So yeah. the combination of those two things will give you a result like this, right? Yeah. But just, just to go back a little bit, when we met in, was it December, January around that December. time? December, right? yeah. 
yeah, December 2019, we connected, and then January, we started working together, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I remember some of the language you used. You just wanted to, like, just make something similar to what you're already making in your job. Like, that was kind of where you're going, and you've like really skyrocketed and went yeah. way beyond your primary goal. Yeah. And, um, I, and I find that really amazing, but can you share with us what were some of your biggest mindset blocks or fears at the time, if you're able to remember? Um, well, mindset blocks where, you know, um, I'd achieved some success, but then again, like it was still sort of surreal, like, okay, I've done this how do I maintain the momentum, right? How do I continue? I knew that I could push myself way beyond, did it just happen out of sheer luck or what did I do? You know, so I wanted to cut, sort of sustain that momentum. So I had that fear of, can I really sustain this? Can this really be, um, you know, a business that generates revenue every day? Can it really become that? Can I really scale this? Yeah. Can it really become like a full-time business? Like all those kind of fears were there. You know, there was there were fears of um, should I really start you know posting and people seeing what I talking about what I do and the success that I've gotten and I help people do. There was that um, should I really be sharing? Should I what should I share? You know, what part of my story would resonate with people? Um, there was also that fear of vulnerability because um, you know you know you'd always said you've achieved so much success you don't see it but you've achieved so much success you need to share your story you need to tell the world yeah, and there was always that fear of you know should I be vulnerable should I really share my story and I remember one time I put out an article and I shared my story and I got it got so much immense um, feedback yeah. like that like till tomorrow I still get people commenting on you know my story you know like over 7,000 you know um, you know reactions like over 2000 comments and how people were inspired by my story so the fear of being vulnerable like sharing my story with the world that was also yeah. there and then also the fear of should i really share my successes with people so mm -hmm. should i share my failures should i share my successes yeah. um should I, that's kind of like letting people into my world and that kind of scared me right so yeah. um and also just um embodying my success um you know um from, you know, like where I come from, you know, in Africa, you're, you're, you're taught not to, you know, show or talk about your success, you're coming, show off. like you're bragging, yeah. exactly, because first it starts with your family thinking you're trying to show off to them, you're trying to flex, yeah. and then your family, your friends, and everybody around you just says, oh, she's a show off, that kind of thing, uh -huh. and, you know, being comfortable with, you know, sharing my success, yeah, and also um, the, the, um, Moving from being, um, you know, an employee who also had a consulting business to actually now employing people and running a, a, a business and having a team, you know, so the people management side of things, the whole, it was a lot of things like I could go on and on and on, but it's just a lot. And then also, you know, there's the burnout too. So when you start yeah. making money and you're working hard in your business, you tend to burn out. Yeah. You're putting so much time into work. You're not thinking about yourself. You're skipping meals. You're not working out. Yeah. So all that, it was just a lot of things, you know, <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fear. And I think you, you really um, pointed out some of the common fears is, oh, what if that was a fluke? Yeah. And then if I go all in, it's not going to work, right? I think that's a very common fear. Yeah. Because the nature of business is that there is no guarantee every month that you yeah. can do that, right? But yeah one of the mindset shifts that we make is that you're the certainty, right? Mm -hmm. There's no certainness. Like, I mean, in the middle of COVID, that's the most uncertain times to go all in into a business, right? But, yeah. but you became the certainty and that's what's created the outcome, right? Regardless of circumstances. Exactly, exactly. Being certain that no matter what happens, you know, my business still succeeds. I thrive no matter what happens. And you know, I, it was sort of a struggle at, you know, with the whole COVID thing, because a lot of people were talking about losing their jobs, how it was hard, you know, taking money from, you know, the government support that they were getting. And with me, it was like cruising, like, you know, money coming in every day, you know, getting all the success and looking at your bank accounts going, whoa. And you're like, you know, you know, in the midst of everything happening, you're still seeing that success, you know, um, you're still making money, you're still paying 
you know, salary to people, you know, you're still living your life like nothing happened. Yeah. Um, but for me, at the beginning of everything, you know, I'd made a big decision that I was going to go into this full time and make sure that it succeeded. And I just told myself that there's an abundance regardless of whatever happened. So I, I'd, I'd worked on my mindset, you know, long before even the COVID that I already had a strong mindset that regardless of what happened, we were still going to thrive through COVID and we did and we're doing it. Yeah, it's so amazing. <laughs> the second thing that you really, uh, you nailed it in describing is sharing your story. I remember in the earlier days that we were working together, you mentioned to me that some expert told you not to share your story. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. when I hear your story, like a young woman, an immigrant from Nigeria, you know, comes to a new, new country to Canada yeah. and she found her way into this industry, which is male dominated, excelled in it, right? Rose up very quickly and started getting um, paid six figures, right? All of that you did it within less than a year. Yes. And that story is extremely powerful because immigrants <laughs> struggle so much to adjust, yeah. right? Yeah. And to yeah. like find their place in this new place, right? But you did it so well and in an accelerated manner and sharing the story and all the, um, the fear around that is like, oh, what are people going to think? Oh, am I showing off? Right. But it's, I find that the best stories are the stories that we feel high resistance around sharing. Right. Right. You're so right. Like, you know, there was like a lot of resistance with, you know, sharing my story and talking about, you know, my failures and how I've been able to achieve this success. I'm like, oh my God, you know, and the truth is whenever, like, I want to put out this kind of post, my heart is beating like, yeah. Should I do this, right? Yeah. But the reactions I get from that, I'm like, oh my God. You yeah. know, watching people's lives in different countries, the feedback yeah. I get, like, you know, people saying, because of your story, I'm inspired to, you know, take on this new opportunity. I was scared before. Mm -hmm. Because of you, I believe I can do this now. Some people say I was on the brink of moving back home because I've been struggling for over two years. Wow. But when I read your story, I believe it's possible because you did it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. You know, the power behind our stories when we're really able to share our stories. And then, of course, because of that, people were also, you know, drawn to me and mm. interested in what I do. And of course, you know, I got a lot of people who also wanted to become my clients, you know, just because, um, you know, I shared my story and yeah. they could really relate with my story. And, you know, this is something that's very key. You know, people buy from people. People want to be able to relate with your story. That's right. right. So when you're not sharing your story, you're doing yourself and the world a disservice because, you know, you're not helping people and then you're also not helping yourself because that's how you also attract the right kind of people that you can really serve. Yeah, yeah. And I find that what moves people and what helps people change if you're in any change business or transformation is yeah. your ability to connect with a person and your ability to understand. And people want to be understood. And that's when they're really able to come to their full bloom, right? Yes, totally. And story has the power to do that because you know like we talked about this before in the work that we do and you know even in entrepreneurship primarily they're white males right mm -hmm. and in, in my field like in in coaching and personal transformation mindset they're, they're white males and they're white females they're like the majority right yeah and so when yeah. i noticed that the more we tell our story and the more we um come into our power authentically right? That has the power to mag magnetically lift people. Exactly. Um, you know, I've been sharing with you lately, you know, some of the um, experiences I've been having recently. A lot of people who are ex already existing in this space before I even got in here and decided to do what I do, yeah. have people reached out to, to me to say, hey, you know, I noticed you, <laughs> you know, I'd like to collaborate with you. I'd like to work with you because the truth is, I'm embracing my difference. I'm different from every, I'm every one of them. So when I step up and, you know, I'm, you know, sharing my content, sharing my story, doing my thing, people are like, who's this black girl, right? Yeah. So it's an opportunity for me to actually, <laughs> to actually stand out because I'm different from every one of them because like everyone else, you know, the way they, they look the same, they speak the same. I look different. I speak differently. I have a different story. Yeah, which a lot of people can relate to, 
So I kind of attract people that can relate to my story and I stand out in that way. Right. So, um, so to anyone out there listening, it's okay to be different, embrace that and use that as your power. Um, embrace that and use that as my power. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And uh, what I love about what you do also is very specific. Yes. So yeah. it's like you're different in terms of like if people are flipping through a bunch of people who are doing the same thing, like you stand out, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. people dig in a little bit, it's like, whoa, this woman's like done so much. Like that's remarkable, like how like how much she was able to achieve despite the fact that she was, you know, born in Africa and then she moved to Canada, like a transition, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like that's the first thing that really stands out. And then even your approach, your demeanor, and then your offer is so specific. And it I is. think it's like a magnet when you have that, right? It is. Yeah. And I really love the fact that I, I stand out because I mean, there's a lot of people that look like me that do general career coaching or business coaching. Yeah. And because I'm different, I've had people that actually come ask, I know you do business analysis. However, can you help me in this area? I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. I'm in HR. I'm an engineer. I'm this, I'm that. Or yeah. how did you achieve such success in your business? Can you share with me the strategies you've used? So I've even attracted people who are not in my niche, but they're just yeah, attracted yeah. to the success that I've had. And yeah. I've gotten a lot of recognition, you know, globally, you know, from different organizations because of what I do. But it's really just that decision, right? That decision to um, say yes to myself, to step up, and then to really work on my mindset. And it's something I share with people I coach. I go through a whole mindset module with them, and they have to go through some mindset exercises because that's really the key to success. Yeah, we all have it in us. It's in us, but we just need a way to bring it out. Yeah, and I said that if if your results are not what you want, there is a mindset hurdle. It's not only about strategies. If yeah, your results are not reflecting. The mindset exactly. has to be addressed, and the sooner and quicker you do it, the faster you get the results. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So, Eno, just to wrap up this amazing conversation, thank you so much for being here. What thank is the you. one advice you would give? a starting entrepreneur or someone who is really trying to find their place in this world like you have? There's a lot I can share, but um, definitely um, it starts with the mindset. Um, I say this because like I always say to myself, oh, I wish I knew um, the power of mindset, you know, early in my career, like maybe when I was in my early 20s, I think I would have, you know, surpass where I am right now because um that was the biggest block that I see that I've always had and a lot of people and a lot of people don't realize this early like you said Julia so start working on your mindset if something is not working everything else is fine with regards to the strategy your skill set you know your you know your stuff but things are not working then you need to retrace your steps and go back to the mindset get help with your mindset there's books you can read you can work with a coach, right? You know, Julia Julia is here and she's fantastic and she helps you really go deep, you know, to see what exactly is blocking you because a lot of times it's a lot of the narratives that we've um, been, we've lived with, you know, sometimes it's also some kind of trauma we've had in the past that we don't really know that's kind of blocking us. Mm -hmm. So the mindset is so, so key. Try to get help with your mindset. Um, belief in yourself, self-belief is so key, um, you know, with regards to achieving success um, as an entrepreneur, and then be open to helping people, to serving people, don't be, don't just be driven by the figures and the money, you know, that's all good, but it all, it's also um, a function of, if I've, if I serve a hundred people, you know, I make this, if I serve a thousand people, if I serve you know, 5,000 people and I'm giving them, helping them to get results, then I also get the benefits with regards to, you know, getting paid for my services. So think about it that way, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and be, be unique, be different, dare to be different. Don't be like everybody else, right? You know, have and create an offer or something that's unique to you. And I always say that use your personal experience to actually help people. And be open to sharing your story because there are people who can connect and relate with your story. Mm-hmm. So be open to doing that. Use your story and your experiences to actually help people. Don't just be the same textbook, um, you know, 
um, example, like what I can always go online to read or buy a book to read. I want something different. People want something different. So try to be unique, use your experiences and story to help people. And don't be scared to ask for help. Seek help in every way. I invest a lot into myself with coaching and mentorship because that's been the only way I've been able to achieve success. Totally. There is no way um, the same me from, you know, five years ago could do this right now because, you know, I had so many mindset blocks. I used to, like, there was imposter syndrome. Can I really do this? Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm the best deserving person for this. I mean, the people that are sort of, you know, wanting to collaborate with me right now are people that maybe five or 10 years ago, I would have seen them as people who were mentors or coaches that I couldn't even speak to. But these are the people that are reaching out to me and saying, I'd like to collaborate with you. So, you know, believe in yourself. Don't, um, don't um, hold back with investing in yourself. There's always a return on investment when it comes to coaching, you know, getting the support that you need. You can never underestimate the fact that we all need help somehow. You know, you know I have coaches and, and I know Julia herself, you know, would also, because she wants to break through some, some goals, everybody is looking for someone ad ahead of them to help them. And that is the reason why um, I say I'm not an overnight success. I just really invested heavily mm -hmm. and you know, got that success because I had people who helped me, sort of drew me up really fast because I was working with them. So, you know, all these things are going to help you, uh, you know, your career. So, you know, if you're seeing this, you want to work with Julia, reach out to Julia. She's going to help you, you know, with, you know, breaking through your mindset and helping you achieve six to seven figures in your, in your business. Because trust me, it's not as hard as we think really <laughs> you know, once we're doing it it's not as hard as we thought it was once yeah we're doing it, right yeah when you're watching from far it feels like oh this seems like a lot and extremely <laughs> difficult yeah that's the truth with everything that we do when it's new it just feels like it will be a lot harder yeah it I, is. I also noticed that people who have had a success track records because they've invested heavily in their mindset and i don't mean like cognitive learning Mm. Like reading books is a good place to start, but like applying yeah. that, what it actually feels and looks like. Right. Sure. And I find that people like, like who have continuous success are very good at making a decision quickly. Oh really yeah, quickly. definitely. Making decisions quickly would definitely help you. If you're the kind of person that says, Oh, I want to think about it. I want to sleep on it. You know, you're not, you're not making any progress. You know, once you're able to make decisions quickly, you know, um, I mean, I've maxed out my credit card because I needed to invest in something real quickly. But did I get the returns real fast? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. For every um, program or coaching that I've invested in, I've definitely gotten the returns, right? Because I made that decision. I followed through. I did what was required of me. I didn't expect, um, you know, overnight success. I did the work required. And when you do the work, you definitely would get the results. And when you're not getting results, ask for help, ask questions. Um, and you definitely get it, but there is no faster way to get a result than to working with someone who's going to help you hold your hand um, through this process than doing it yourself. The risk uh, of doing it yourself is always way higher and you spend more trying to do things yourself than, you know, having someone that you pay and say, help me. It's always faster that way. Yeah. It's so, so great. I, today I made a point just last thing because I, yeah. I love what you're sharing right now. It's <laughs> so on point and very inspiring yeah. that entrepreneurs versus employees, right? Entrepreneurs value time more than money. Mm. Employees value money more than time. Yeah. So when somebody is very scarce around finances, but are willing to like do it themselves and like fail and do that, they're actually experiencing the employee mindset, which is impossible to get the entrepreneur results with the same mindset. So I love that you said that. Yeah, definitely. It's a different mindset, really, being an employee and an entrepreneur. You just see things differently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, time is money, like you said, you know, for an entrepreneur More. or an for an employee, um, you know, you want, you, you're being told what to do. You know, you have to work nine to five. You know, if you work past a certain period, you get an overtime. Like, it's just different. But with regards to being an entrepreneur, you kind of structure your day. You know that you have to make the most out of your day if you want to be uh, productive, if you want to be uh, profitable, you know, as an entrepreneur. So the mindset is really different. And um, you know, when you want to step away from being an employee to being an entrepreneur, you definitely need help too with your mindset. 
yeah. because um, it's it's a different ball game. And as an em an, an employee, because you've always been sort of boxed, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're sort of open up to the world. You need help to make that transition. Yeah, uh, to not feel scared. Um, to to make some bold moves because as an entrepreneur, you're making a lot of bold decisions, a lot yeah. of bold decisions that you need to make. So you definitely need help with the mindset from moving from employee phase to entrepreneur phase. Thank <laughs> you so much for this amazing conversation and sharing your story to inspire more people. Thank and you. How too. much your presence is already shining and making a difference in other people's lives. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for what you do, um, you know, helping um, a lot of professionals around the world to, um, to see how they can do more, be more, right? Um, we can be, do, have everything that we truly desire. Um, I love how you, you're focused on helping, um, you, know, you know, successful professionals actually move into successful entrepreneurship. And then even people who are already entrepreneurs who are struggling, You've also helped a lot of them, you know, break through into six to seven figures. I know this. Um, also, something, you know, unique about you is the way you teach the law of attraction is different from the way everybody else does. And, you know, the way you, um, you know, you teach it just makes sense, right? So um, thank you for what you do as well. <laughs> thank you. Um, I will put Eno's contact down below. So if you want to reach out to her, we'll put the best way to you can reach out to her if you want to learn more about her program. If you aspire to have a career transition and go into business analysis, which has a lot of perks, right? Um, you know, high it's, it's a very booming industry right now. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not going away. It's only growing, which is a great thing, as well as, you know, six-figure income at most times, also the option to work remotely. So there are so many amazing things about this career. So if you want to find out more about this career, Eno is the best person that you should talk to. So I'll put her link down below so you can have a chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye for now.